Did you get what you wanted out of that, mate? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. I think it was. Um, yeah, we, we, it's been a long couple of weeks, and the girls have been really chomping at the bit to, to play some footy. Um, not, 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 not really knowing how we're going the conditions because um, it's certainly a lot different than playing in Australia. So, um, but I think they did a fantastic job. I think it's been a long couple of years, Sammy, since the Jorusa played. Um, yeah, what was it like to be back in Jorusa? Yeah. Unbelievable, as Brad just said. Um, been a long couple of weeks but you know in front of that it's been a long couple of years but I think um, all the girls they're such incredible athletes they find things to stay focused on to make sure that um, you know they still are the best players they can be even if it means two years or a year without playing football because of everything that's going on in the world so um, yeah just a credit to them to be able to stay focused on winning this World Cup even though it's been pushed back and there's been distractions but um, we're here now and that's all that matters. For yourself, four tries. Um, you know, there's been a lot of there's a, a real competition for fullbacks in the NRLW. Like, who's the best fullback? You, you, you yeah, I'm just not sure. But you couldn't have um, you couldn't have done much more. I wouldn't think. Uh, I am. Um, I'm privileged to have the conversations with people that are about the competition in this position, but. I just said to the girls, literally all I do is just follow them around. I just I just keep busy and follow my teammates. I just see it as they do so much hard work and um, I just follow them around and try and finish it off to reward them for their hard work. So, um, But in terms of the competition, that's a big credit to how good um, Women's Rugby League is in Australia at the moment. There's um, positions that have so much um, competition within them um, and I'm really privileged to be a part of that competition. Has that made you a better player? Absolutely. Uh, it was probably about you know six years ago that we came into camp. It was 2016 and Brad sat us down. This is before the 2017 World Cup and he explained how many people were in the group at that time and um, it was a really large group. There would have been 30 of us um, and he told us that pressure equals diamonds and we all sort of took that on and um, we sort of you know unspokenly knew that if you didn't take on the pressure there was no chance of you becoming a diamond, so uh, we just took that on, and we know that it's going to make us better players for it. Right. We just, just talking about the quality of the NRLW. Do you think that was an indication of maybe a gap we're going to see as the competition goes on? Um, look, it's a long competition, and um, that's only against one opposition. So, but yeah, you've only got to look at the players that um, didn't play tonight for us. Like we've still got players like M. Tonegato, um, Jamie Chapman, Jess Surges, Shaley Bent that will play in four days' time. So, um, we've said we've said all along that it'll take 24. Um, but it is. It's a great credit to the NRLW clubs. They've done a fantastic job with these ladies in terms of um, preparing them for for what is this World Cup. Obviously, the uh, shorter games, but you think with the fitness and quality standards, you know, like where, did the, where did you guys sit on length of games, that kind of thing? Yeah, no, look, look I, uh, we only play 70 minutes down in Australia, and, um, you know, like it's certainly something that we could probably look at in the international game, but like our girls are like, they'll play for an hour and 20 minutes, <laughs> yeah, after them each half. But, um, Wait, will we? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, I think as the game evolves, like, um, you're going to see the gap shorten. Brad, these women are elite athletes, so you don't need to teach them how to play footy when you come into camp. What is the focus when you all come together as a group? Oh, it's, it is. It's about connection and it's about getting along and um, making sure that we leave the jersey in a better place. And there's plenty of people that have worn the jersey. Um, 160, I think we're up to 170 now. So um, it's really important that we understand, you know, the foundations that this team was built on, the foundations that um, women's rugby, rugby league was, was built on. And, um, you know, like, it's all good and well to be a good player, but you've got to be a, a great Jillaroo, which is a great character, and, and all 24 of these girls are. Kennedy, did you get a little bit emotional there but when the anthem was going on? Talk us through that. <coughs> yeah, obviously, debuting tonight. Um, I think got goosebumps just walking out, not because of the cold. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, just, I think it was a really surreal moment, not just for myself, but for the other debutantes, and the girls who've worn the jersey before. Um, you know, I think it's a pretty special moment when you're standing there side by side with the girls that are, you call your sisters and yeah, to hear the national anthem out loud, stand there um, representing, you know, the First Nations people and the Australians and, you know, basically everything we've built. Yeah, it's been a long two weeks, but it was a pretty special moment. 
your family here or to share it or like back home or no no everyone's back home so i think that was part of the emotion too knowing that um you know everyone's watching on tv and fox league and um had some family friends in the um in the crowd but yeah everyone's at home so how do you think your third view went right <laughs> 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 no, I just wanted to do my job. Um, Brad spoke to me before the game, just energy, discipline, um, and just do what I've done in the last bit of the NRLW season. So just be myself, and I felt like I did it. Right. She did a fantastic <laughs> job. Um, and look, I said we'll see all these players roll out over, and, and Kennedy will start up front in four days' time. So um, yeah, you'll, you'll see a bit more of her in four days. Brad, you're a number of rusty from Cook Islands. He said he thought the pools, he used the word unfair, he thought New Zealand and Australia should have been kept apart. Um, have you got any thoughts? On oh, that? look, it's, the pool is what it is. It's, um, yeah, it's, it, it, might, it might be hard for those guys. Um, yeah, they probably see us and New Zealand as, as one and two, but, um, you know, there's some pretty good teams in the other side of the, the competition as well. The English um, did a great job yesterday, and, and PNG are an emerging nation who have done really well as well. So. Yeah, I wouldn't like to say that um, that we're they're one and, well, we're one and two. We'll, we'll sort that out over the next couple of weeks. Did you see any of the other games, right? and, and you girls as well? Yeah, we certainly sat around and, and watched the, the games. You know, we, we get excited as as much as, as you guys to watch footy. So the the games have been going on in the team room and, and making sure we're watching both the men's and the women's World Cup. So. Any thoughts of, on, on England's performance against Brazil? Did they impress you at all? Because obviously as the, the host nation you could come up against them in the semi-final, you never know. Any thoughts on England? Yeah, no, I thought they, they, they went well. Um, you know, it's great to see a, a nation like Brazil in the, in the competition. They're obviously very, very raw, but um, you know, it, was, uh, it would have been great for their friends and family to see them running around in a World Cup. Brad, you've touched on the fact that your next game is in four days' time. As a coach, how do you manage that and the player loads with such short turnarounds? Yeah, we've, we've, we've actually tried to start that process before we even played today by the players that we've rested and the teams that we've picked and the minutes that we gave players like Kennedy and the, the ones that have been around for a while like, like Sammy. Um, so we've got a bit of a plan that um, that will hopefully unravel over the next um, few days and I'm making sure that everybody's gas tank is empty come the end of this tournament and, and we give our, give our best. Shoulders OK, Kennedy? Oh yeah, no, I'm, I'm sweet, I'm fresh, ready to start up front next game. <laughs> <laughs> You don't fancy 120 minute halves then in these, these weather conditions? Oh, 120 minute, no, 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 thank you. It's beautiful out there, but um, no thanks. Yeah. <laughs> we'll wrap it up. I know you, it was your little one's birthday it was yesterday. Does that rattle around your neck? Does it hurt you a little one or stay with you? Oh, I think this <laughs> might break her neck if I'm doing it around. No, I. Um, yeah, definitely took a couple of moments today to think about my purpose. Um, and there was just so many contributing factors, but the main two is my two teams that um, have been driving me to get back on the field. And number one team is my family at home. Um, and my number two team is the Dillaroos. So I thought um, about two of those things today and um, I just wanted to take the field. I really did. Um, and I think, you know, time away from the game, that's what it's given me. It's given me appreciation for the game. So um, I had such pride in my heart running out onto the field. It's been um, nine years since I was able to do that in a World Cup. Um, so I took every single moment in um, and I'm so happy that I get to go to sleep tonight knowing that um, I did what I set out to do and that was to um, run around on the field again in the World Cup. Sam, like you said, nine years ago that was here in England. Um, it's, I think, a completely different sort of environment, you know, running out of this stadium and these facilities, and that it's changed a lot, hasn't it? Oh, it's changed so much. Um, well, first of all, it was a heat wave nine years ago, so... <laughs> that, but um, in terms of women's rugby league, yeah, most certainly. Um, we see it every every year now. Something There's something new. Um, the skill set is bigger and better. Um, but back then, um, the skill set was as good as it was. Um, for that year, the people were as good as um, they could be for their country, um, and that continues to expand and get better every year. And if you would ask someone in another nine years' time, you probably ask the same question to them. Um, but right now, this is amazing, and back in 2013, that was amazing. And in nine years' time, that's going to be the new amazing. <laughs> <laughs> Makes sense. Yeah, fabulous. Thank you very much. Thanks, guys.